Well, we can have a chat now about all the goings on at Six Ways as Worcester and England centre Ollie Lawrence joins us. How are you, mate? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Yeah, just uh, it's been interesting, <laughs> interesting uh, for eight hours, but um, yeah, kind of just waiting to see what unfolds as the week as the week goes on, really. Yeah, Ollie, it's class to have you. It would have been better in other circumstances. We've been trying to make it happen for a while, trying to get you on. But as we've got you now, let's start with a positive. Great win at the weekend against Newcastle. And I can't even imagine being in the position that you're in as a player, not just you, the whole team, the squad. And be honest with us, how difficult is it to kind of have in the mind that it could be the last game, it could be the last game for Worcester ever when you go into a game like that? And then that just kind of shows what you are as a team to put in that kind of performance and win. Yeah, I think it's been, I think it's been tricky over the last few weeks mainly like within the weeks because that's when like we've been holding all the meetings um we've been kind of seeing everything in the press everything on twitter um and i obviously came to friday and we had a meeting with uh, kind of the head of our the head of the rfu rpa prl and they kind of said to us like this is what the crack is um it's likely for monday you won't be in the league for the next couple of weeks um so we were all just like right okay so unlikely to be actually be paid next week and then also not actually able to come into training the club due to our insurance running out so a lot of boys heads were fried at that point so then we had like a meeting within the players about kind of who wanted to play and who didn't feel comfortable playing obviously because say example someone went out there touch with no one did but went out there and did their did their leg or anything that was one day there isn't a club anymore who's going to look after them um so we had those conversations we decided that the majority was going to hold the vote um, and we bought, everyone bought into it. Um, and then by the time Friday came, uh, we were all in it. Our eyes were focused on the game. Our perception was, if this is going to be our last game, let's go out on a high. Um, let's get a win. Let's put, let's put a show on for the fans and let's do it for each other. Because like, like we said, we didn't know if this was going to be our last game ever or whether we were hopefully going to have more in the future. Um, and I think we hopefully made the fans proud and definitely made ourselves, ourselves proud by her. Uh, getting a good win at home and um, yeah, leading on to hopefully what will be um, a continuation of the league. Yeah, and just looking at it, I, I mentioned this earlier when we were chatting about the, the actual game itself. Now, you talked about insurances and things like that then. No one else outside of the group would have understood how hard it is to think, actually, I don't know whether I'm going to get insured. I watched your very last tackle um, right at the end of the game where you've absolutely flown in and tried to obliterate someone. Um, there was absolutely no thought in your mind of ever being concerned about getting injured then, was there? Because you're a Worcester lad through and through, obviously a Bromsgrove schoolboy, hell of a school. Um, But it's something that you come through the academy, you care massively about this club. So how hard personally has it been for you and is it for you with with everything that's hanging over your head? Yeah, it's been difficult because, um, like like you just said, I've been been, affiliated with the club since I've been 14 and it's somewhere for me that that's now home and over the years of I've, I've always stuck by the club I've always stayed true to staying at Worcester um and yeah if I'm honest it was it was an emotional day either before and after the game um before with friends and the teammates and after my family like walking around the stadium thinking like this could be the last time we take the field I think I think everyone just wanted to give it our all if it was new boys that joined for the first time this season they wanted to do it for the boys that have been here for however, however many years and I think also, part of that was for the staff as well because we know what they've gone through over the last over the last month, and I think it was a whole, like I said, Warriors performance. And I think, um, yeah, I don't think anyone left anything out there on the field. No, and when you mentioned about you were chatting about an injury or if someone picked up a wreck their ACL, for example, yeah, what was the general consensus then? What would have happened from there? Did Prem Rugby? Did the RFU? How would how will that get dealt with if someone picked up an injury like that? Because that is, I suppose, the biggest worry, along with the emotional stuff. But for some of the players, that if they play, get injured, and what are they meant to do then with rehab and all these things? What of the RFU or the PRL or? So we we had that conversation. We had the conversation with them, and they said that within our contracts, we were insured. So, say for example, we were to pick up an injury, we would be insured to like have the operation, for example. But then then the whole rehab side of it comes in. Like, if we don't have staff in the club to be able to rehab, who's going to do the rehab? So we actually didn't get onto that conversation. But in terms of the actual, if you did have an injury and needed to have an operation, you would be covered through your contract and you would be covered to be rehabbed. And at some point down the line, you'd have to pick that up. But 
that would have been a delayed a delayed um like process it wouldn't have been like how normally happens something happens on the weekend you see a specialist by next week the ops the following week it it would have been definitely a, a delayed process but it's something that we all bought into and we knew the risk going into it and thankfully it paid off and we came out of it squeaky clean yeah, good stuff. Now, ultimately, the big question, the question on everyone's lips, whether you're involved in it or from the outside, is what next? Um, what do you, Can you divulge what you've been told as a player, as an employee, as someone that loves the club? Yeah, so um, we've got, there's been like talks continuing, um, I think, with the RFU and the club today. Um, and there's been various back to back meetings. We've got a meeting of the team this evening. Um, I think by Zoom, uh, Dime said this morning at about eight, nine o'clock this evening. Um, as to whether we're going to be allowed in the building, as to whether we're going to have to move uh, elsewhere to be able to do our gym and our, the players that are doing rehab. Um, so hopefully we'll have answers this evening. Um, but as far as we're aware, we were told we finished the game. The week's off. We're not going to be in this week regardless. Dimes gave it us off. Um, because as far as we're aware, we, we were going to be suspended today. Um, and then we were kind of just waiting to see uh, that via either an update through the uh, through the WhatsApp group chat or via via Twitter, as as we seem to be getting a lot of our um, information these days. Is anything filtering down from the owners? Anything nothing, at all? Nothing really, as of much as to what's happening. We haven't really had much direct contact with the owners in terms of as a group. Um, individual players have spoken to the owners um, in drips and drabs, and I believe Dimes has had conversations with them, but. It's, we've been very much out the loop, and I think that's still the case. Um, so we've kind of we've done everything we can do now. Obviously, you've seen over the last few weeks, we've done posts, we've done tweets, we've done a numerous amount of things to kind of put pressure on. Not, I wouldn't say, yeah, put pressure on the owners just to kind of speak up and just to tell us what's happening. Because if they if they're if they're open and honest and just tell us like, yeah, lads, it's going to be difficult for them over the next month or yeah, you might be getting paid late this month. Like it makes things a lot easier for boys to like make plans, whether that's like with their mortgages or whether that's like whatever they have to do. Not everyone's in that fortunate position where they can take money out of the savings account and use that for this month, or they can take money from here and use it for there, or they've got expendable money, which it, it doesn't make a difference for a month or two. But there are players in our team that live month to month, and I think those are the people that we have to think about. And that's gonna that that was the difficult situation within the team is. There was a lot of players stressing with families and with kids, um, and we just wanted to know what was going on. And we kind of have not been in the in the know for for a very long time now. So um, it's 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 kind of it's been good it's been good that the RFU and the PRL have stepped in now. But whether they could have done it sooner, I mean, who knows? Um, but we're in the situation that we're in now, and hopefully we can come out of it. And there is light at the end of the tunnel. But at the moment, there's a lot of uncertainty, and I'm hoping throughout the next 24 to 48 hours we'll actually have a better update as to where we stand yeah it's pretty horrific the way they've handled things i think the, the two owners i can say that from my perspective absolute cowboys but let's go on to a positive then because obviously the victory was great the game was uh you know your third biggest ever win in the premiership but more importantly the night out on saturday yeah. um going into worcester i know there's a lot of fans knocking around as well and it was a real family atmosphere um how good was Saturday night? And did Steve Diamond neck any points or was he just pulling them behind the bar? Uh, nah, there was a bit of both. I mean, um, we'd, we'd planned like a little a little gathering because it, um, it was my birthday last week. So we decided to get all the partners and all the players and staff together this weekend, um, just hide out a place and got everyone together. And then obviously with everything that turned out, it ended up kind of being like, a, we don't know what's the next thing. So let's just throw everyone in. If any fans wanted to come down and... Dimes went through the town, went to a few local pubs and stuff, saw some of the fans, and then a few of them ended up in the last place where we were at. But it was a really good night. It was really good to have everyone together, forgetting about kind of everything that had been going on at the club. We'd just come off the back of the win, um, enjoy the night, and then I think a few boys carried it on into Sunday. Um, and then, and then uh, yeah, today we were kind of back to business, kind of back to the drawing board and hoping uh, everything's work out. Where did you end up on, where's the final nightclub? Relive my youth now. <laughs> I think a few boys might have ended up in like bushes or velvet. I think bushes. Uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I think a few of the boys. I can't say I lasted the whole night. Um, unfortunately, this time. But um, yeah, no, it was a it was a good night for, for all the boys, and it was nice to see all the all the staff and all the everyone across the the whole side of things involved and uh, all the. When you look at Steve Diamond, he's a person that seems to have divided opinion. 
um, across the board in rugby. He's someone that we speak highly of. We, we like him as a, as a bloke. We had him on, actually, uh, first week, so getting great access to him. But he seems to have gone up in a lot of people's estimations around the world globally now, how he's handled this. How has he been on the inside for you, working with someone who could basically, if anyone walked through that door, he could probably throw them through the door if uh, he didn't like <laughs> what he was hearing? Um, no, nah, he's been cast, to be honest with you. He's, um, I mean, the biggest... The biggest dilemma he had was keeping the group together. Um, I think that was that was the main thing he wanted to uh, to achieve from all of this was man- making sure that whatever crap was going on over the far side, the our rugby side of the building was was aligned and we were together in all of it. Um, and I think he's done an amazing job of that. Um, he's always tried to give us as much open clarity as he as he can, without obviously giving everything away. As obviously the certain stuff that he won't be able to tell us, but. He's kept us in the know as much as he can, and we've, he's held multiple meetings trying to keep boys um, up to date as much as he could. Um, and like, there's only credit to him. I think, like you said, he has got there's mixed opinions of of, uh, of times, but at this club, there's only been a there's only been a good one. Um, yeah. I think he's made a real impact on this club. Yeah. What happens in the scenario if you went in now or yesterday, or in three or four days' time, and say that? You- you want to leave. Say someone comes in, they saw your performance at the weekend or the first game of the season and you're like, right, Gloucester have come in for me. Are you allowed to leave? No. Who's that on? You're not. So no, with all no. this going on, you're not allowed to find another club. You've just got to sit and wait. Yeah, so there's, we, there's been a lot of questions asked about this. So um, none of us are allowed to are allowed to just leave. Um, like not Because technically, our, our, none of our contracts have been breached. Um when we do not get paid, they have a 14 day window to pay you. And that's always been Matt and that's always been here. Um, in terms of suspension from the league, again, it's not a breach of your contract because if they pay you, then technically you're still part of the club. You can ask to leave. Um, and I think a few boys have. Some boys have been allowed. One boy's been allowed. Other boys have been turned down. Um, I think now we're on to a new matter where if we're suspended from the league, it's going to be a question of, right, can we go on loan uh, to this club or to this club? Um, and that's a conversation that um, a lot of boys will be having with Dimes. Um, and I think it's a sensible option for players that, like for someone like Duan, for example, or Rory, who obviously have got the autumns and stuff coming up, like they want to keep playing 80 minutes to rugby. Um, and it's important for them to, to get their game time. Um, Dewey's only played one eighty minutes, and like he wants to keep playing. And there's a lot of other boys in similar positions. Um, but at the end of the day, the final say goes down to the owners. Like if they want to let you leave, they will let you leave. If they don't want to, then they're the ones that control what we do. Yeah, not in a good way either, from my point of view. But um, who would you fancy playing for then if you could go on loan? Can we ask you that? Is that too much? <laughs> yeah. Who wouldn't you go to? Can you tell us who you wouldn't want to go to? <laughs> I, I, I don't think I don't think I'd be travelling all the way up to Newcastle. No offence. I don't think that'd be uh, that'd be first on the list. I don't think I'd want to be moving too far away to go on to go on loan for a few weeks. Um, but yeah, no, I think there's there's a there's a few options I'd like to I'd like to look at. Um, and I've had those conversations with with Dimes um, and with obviously with my agent and stuff. And um, it's just to keep continuing training. Like that's the main thing. Even if you don't play for these teams, just being able to train week in week out is the main thing for me especially coming off the, the back of like a lengthy, like it was about 11 months other than the final where I didn't, I didn't play any, um, any rugby down to injury. So uh, that's the main thing for me. I kind of just get back into the flow of things. And then obviously it's come to a halt now. So I just want to keep that, keep that going um, and keep getting 80 minutes performances together. So um, fingers crossed, everything, everything works out um, in terms of hopefully with the club and I don't have to take that option. Um, but if things don't work out at the club, then hopefully I'm allowed to take those options and then, um, Try and get some. Try and get some rugby elsewhere. So, last thing I asked you, obviously, you know, we saw you involved with England at times. Has Eddie Jones been in touch at all? I know it's uh, a pretty difficult time for you as an individual, as a player, someone that loves the club. But has Eddie been in touch at all around where you stand in the squad and maybe putting an arm around a few players? Um, he spoke to me. I actually spoke to him Sunday. Um, we caught up, and he just asked me about the situation at Worcester, how things were, uh, what I was looking to do, uh, what he's looking from looking from me personally. From, um, uh, on the field standpoint um, and we're kind of aligned in our thinking in, in that regard uh, and yeah that's um, that's kind of as much as we've spoken about um, and I know what I need to do now so that just involves me getting on the field and kind of doing what I do best and uh, repeating that week in week out 
Ollie, I'm just conscious in these sort of situations that we kind of dictate the flow of the interview and what you talk about. But is there anything that you kind of want to get off your chest when it comes to maybe like a, a message to either your teammates, the owners, your fans, anything like that that we haven't discussed already? Uh, nah, to my teammates and to the fans, I just want to say thank you um, for sticking by us through all of this. Like, it's not easy, um, especially those first two games. Like, we probably didn't give our best representation of us as a team and where we were at. Um, and regardless of whether we had preseason games or not, uh, we didn't want to use that as an excuse or look as look as victims. Um, and that's something that um, we proud like we pride ourselves in. Um, and I think it, it's been like amazing the support we've had from the community, from the fans, from all the players and staff. And uh, I think that's that is the main thing. And only we can hope now is that from future reference that when people are in charge at the top that they are the credible checks are taken um, and I think that needs to be something looked at for future reference to maybe whether that's a yearly or a, every couple of years they're rechecked because things can go up and down obviously COVID took a massive a massive hit on a lot of clubs um, and as we all know rugby isn't, isn't a profitable business um, so that needs to be changed and whatever way that can that can be done I think this is an example of it um, and one which that um, it needs to be addressed um, not just for the sake of our team, but for the sake of the future of the Premiership, really. Mm, absolutely. Oli, I should have mentioned as well, before you go, that me and Goody were with your old man. It could have been five years ago, Goody. A long time, that. Yeah. It was yeah, it was a while ago. And I remember sat there and said, we, it happens a lot. Oh, my lad's going to be a good rugby player. He's this, he's <laughs> that. We're just nodding. So we're nodding at your dad like, yeah, mate, we've heard it all before. Turns out it was you. I knew Jim. You, you did say know. that. But I, well, I was just like, yeah, all right. Well, yeah, okay, we'll see. Turns out it was you. And you've turned into <laughs> not just a great rugby player, but a great bloke as well and a great front man for, you know, the, the club that you're deep rooted to. And uh, I think it's credit to yourself with everything that you're going through. Me and Goody were talking about it earlier. It'd be easy for people just to say, you know what, fuck this. I'm gone. Whether or not I can go or not, I'm gone. Deal with it after. <laughs> So I think it's credit to yourself, mate, and a lot of the lads that uh, are there and the people in the background that probably don't get the the profile or the platform to talk about it because it, it must be a shit time. And, um, you know, I think it speaks volumes, the game at the weekend, uh, just, just coming away and winning that. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And I think, um, like, rightly or wrongly, I've probably, I've probably commented on a few situations um, over the last couple of months Um whether that's to do with the owners or whether that's to do with how things are at the club and rightly or wrongly, I did want to voice my opinion, um, whether or not that's an accurate statement. Um, well, we'll have to wait and see about that. Um, but someone had to be a vocal point for our team and it couldn't just be dimes and it wasn't fair for him to take all, all of the backlash as much as he, he wanted to do that. Um, we're all involved in this together and sometimes it takes players to speak up to do that. And uh, like I said, it's going to differ from opinions as to whether that was right or wrong to do. Um, but I, like I said, I, I gave my opinion at the time as to as to what I thought. Uh, hopefully, I'm I'm proven wrong, and we come out of this, and we can have our heads uh, held high, and we can all all part ways um, on 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 the right way. Um, but yeah, for now, I think um, let's just keep our fingers fingers crossed that uh, the the best situation comes of this. Yeah, well, they say there's a, there's a great motivator. I don't know what they say. You see it on Instagram all the time. With adversity comes something good. I don't know what it is. I ain't going to say it because I ain't a motivator. But hopefully that is the case, mate. We've got our fingers and toes and all that cross for you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Last thing I want to say, obviously, I think it was the right thing that you did. Uh, it's your opinion, but I do need to ask you your opinion on something else as well. Steve Diamond and his tight T-shirts. Where's he getting them from? Because he looks good for 64 he looks like he's ready to get down with the spoons and have a scrap every Saturday. <laughs> no, he's not. Did you give him some bant on that? Well, to be fair, I've kind of stayed away from the balance, honestly. I have really, uh, I didn't want to uh, I didn't want to piss him off too early when I first came in. I was like, I've got to keep on side here. I've not played for a for a while now. So um but um once things are uh, are all sweet now at the club, I think um I think we're gonna have to start getting him a few larger t shirts. He's uh, I think he's enjoying the, <laughs> he's enjoying the gym a bit too much getting on that bench press, I think. <laughs> Um, so it. yeah, nah. But he loves he loves those tight t-shirts. But maybe it's his missus doing the washing. Who knows? <laughs> mm -hmm.